Welcome back for another chapter in my year-by-year -year look at the United States of America, beginning with 1800, this time 1801. I've been asked why I chose 1800 as a starting point to which I really don't have an answer. However, this time we'll take a brief look and a fascinating look at 1801. The year began with John Adams still holding the office of the president and as a Federalist Party. His vice president was still Thomas Jefferson, who was a of the Democratic Republican Party. Of course, all this changed on March 4th when Thomas Jefferson became president and Aaron Burr his vice president. John Marshall was serving as the Chief Justice and Speaker of the House. 1801 saw the start of the first Barbary War, which actually went from 1801 to 1805, and this was an undeclared wa war waged by the United States against the North African states of Morocco, Tripoli, Algiers, and Tunis. The principal cause of the war was that um, those states harbored and supported the actions of pirates against American shipping vessels in the Mediterranean Sea. The war did not completely end the acts of piracy against American vessels, but it did prove something very important, that though the United States um, was young, it was capable of waging war, if necessary, and in places far from its own shores. The First Barbary War, again, um, 1801 to 1805. It was the first overseas war fought by the United States, and it happened during the presidency of Thomas, Thomas Jefferson also known as the Barbary Coast War or the Tripolitan War. It pitted the United States against pirates from the nations known collectively as the Barbary States. The incident arose over tribu um, tributes that were customarily paid to the nations by U.S. traders. In 1801, Tripoli increased demands for payment and President Jefferson refused to pay uh, the demand and Tripoli declared war on the United States by cutting down the flagstaff in front of the U.S. consulate. Congress authorized the use of military force for the protection of American interests in the Mediterranean, and on August 1, 1801, the USS Enterprise defeated the Tripoli at sea. In 1802, Jefferson increased the presence of Navy of the Navy in the area by deploying additional ships under the command of Com Commodore Edward Preble. On July 14th, um, 1804, under Preble's command, the, new na uh, the Navy attacked Tripoli, but the most famous event of the war occurred in April and May of, eight of 1805 um, with, with the Battle of Derma, and General William Eaton and First Lieutenant uh, Presley O'Bannon led a force of eight Marines and 500 mercenaries from Alexandria, Egypt, across the desert to the city of Derma, which they laid siege to. Upon their victory, the American flag was raised, and this marked the first time it had been done in victory on foreign soil. The presidential election had ended in, the, in a tie in 1800, and a contingent election was held in 1801. An electoral tie between Thomas Jefferson and Aaron Burr was resolved, and Thomas, um, Thomas Jefferson took office on March 4, 1801. The United States presidential election of 1800 was the fourth quadrennial presidential election. It was held on Friday, Friday October 31st to Wednesday, October or December 3rd, 1800, in what is sometimes referred to as the Revolution of 1800. Thomas Jefferson defeated John Adams, as I have already told you, and the election was a realigning election that ushered in a generation of Democratic-Republican Party rule and the eventual demise of the Federalist Party in the First Party system. It was a long, bitter rematch of the 1796 election between the pro-French and pro-decentralization Democrat Republicans under Jefferson and Aaron Burr against incumbent Adams and Charles uh, Pickney, uh, who were pro-British um, pro, pro and pro-centralization Federalists. The chief political issues included opposition to the tax imposed by Congress to uh, pay for the mobilization of the new army and the navy in the Quasi-War against France in 1798 and the Alien and Seditions Acts by which Federalists were trying to stifle dissent, especially by Democratic-Republican newspaper editors. 
While the Democratic Republicans were well organized at the state and local level, the Federalists were disorganized and suffered a bitter split between their two major leaders, President Adams and Alexander Hamilton, and the jockeying for the electoral votes, regional divisions, and the propaganda smear campaigns created by both parties made the election recognizably modern. The election exposed one of the flaws in the original Constitution. Members of the Electoral College were authorized by the original Constitution to vote for two names for president. The two-vote ballot was create, created in order to try to maximize the possibility that one candidate received votes from a majority of the electors nationwide. The drafters of the Constitution had not anticipated the rise of political, uh, organized political parties, which made attaining a nationwide majority much easier. The Democratic Republicans had planned for one of the electors to abstain from casting his second vote for Aaron Burr, which would have led to Jefferson receiving one electoral vote more than Burr. The plan, however, was mishandled. Each elector who voted for Jefferson also voted for Burr, resulting in a tight electoral vote. The election was then put into the hands of the outgoing House of Representatives, which after 35 votes, in which neither Jefferson nor Burr obtained a majority, elected Jefferson on the 36th ballot. To rectify the flaw in the original presidential election mechanism, the 12th Amendment ratified in 1804 was added to the United States Constitution stipulating that electors make a discrete choice between their selections for president and for vice president. The result of this election was affected by the three-fifths clause. Had slaves not been counted as persons for the purposes of congressional appointment, Adams would have won, albeit with a lower number of popular votes than Jefferson. And Jefferson was subsequently criticized as having won the Temple of Liberty on the shoulders of slaves. In February 1801, Washington, D.C. was placed under the jurisdiction of the U.S. Congress, and it remained that way for some time. District of Columbia, home rule, is the ability of residents of the District of Columbia to govern their local affairs. As the federal capital, the Constitution grants the United States Congress exclusive jurisdiction over the district in all ca cases whatever. At certain times, and presently, um, since 1973, Congress has allowed certain powers of government to be carried out by locally elected officials. However, Congress maintains the power to overturn local laws and exercises greater oversight of the city than exists for any other U.S. state. Furthermore, the district's elected government exists at the pleasure of Congress and could theoretically be revoked at any time. A separation yet uh, related, uh, separate but Related controversy is the district's lack of voting representation in Congress. The city's unique status creates a situation where D.C. residents do not have full control over their local government, nor do they have the voting representation in the body that uh, has full control. In July, Eli Whitney, who was later famous for the invention of the cotton gin, demonstrated before Congress the advantages of the system of interchangeable parts in the manufacture of firearms. However, Eli Whitney has often been incorrectly credited with inventing the idea of interchangeable parts, which he championed for years as a maker of muskets. However, the idea uh, predated Whitney, and Whitney's role in it was one of promotion uh, and popularizing, but not of invention. Successful implementation of the idea eluded Whitney until near the end of his life, occurring first in uh, others' armories. On August 1st, the USS Enterprise um, defeated the 14-gun uh, Tripolitan Corsair of Tripoli. And lastly, given rise on November 16th was the publication of the first edition of the New York Evening Post. Of course, there are many more things that took place in 1801, but these are highlights. Be back when I release the next edition of This Was, and we will be taking a look at all the events relevant to life in the United States of America in 1802. Thanks for stopping by.